Brady Oddities HF009 is a compact all-in-one HF vertical kit that has everything you need to get on the air packed away in this handy carrying kit. If you're looking for an easy to use vertical antenna kit, this may be the answer. So let's dig into the HF009, see what it includes and how it performs on the air. The Radiotity HF009 portable HF antenna covers the 60 meter through the 6 meter bands, that is 5 through 50 megahertz, using a vertical whip and center loaded coil. The core component of the system is the coil itself. The coil unit is encased inside this protective housing and has a built-in slider that is used to adjust the coil inductance for tuning. Once this antenna is set up, band or frequency selection is done by moving the slider until the antenna comes into resonance. For the higher bands, like 15 meters and above, you will move the slider to the top and then adjust the whip length until the antenna is resonant. For lower bands, uh, you fully extend the whip and then adjust the slider for resonance. In using the antenna, you should be able to achieve an SWR of 1.5 to 1 or less, depending on ground or soil conditions, on any frequency between 60 and 6 meters. The antenna doesn't have enough length or inductance for the 80 meter band. Overall deployed height is about 12.1 feet, and three ground radios occupy a space 16 feet in radius. Power handling is 150 watts sideband and 100 watts CW. The manufacturer doesn't specify a power rating for um, digital or FT8 operation, but since those are full duty cycle modes, I would think you can safely use it at one third the rated sideband level or about 60 watts. In full disclosure, Radiotity sent me the HF009 vertical antenna for this video. We don't have a working relationship, although I am part of their affiliate program. My comments and experiences with it are my own without any outside influence. So let's open up the case and see what you get with the HF009 vertical antenna system. The Radiotity HF009 vertical antenna kit comes in a semi-hard case that's 19 by 8 by 4 inches with a total weight of about 4.4 pounds. Opening the case, there are two sections one that holds the rigid antenna parts, and the mesh pocket for the instructions, ground radios, and coax. Looking at the antenna components, first is the loading coil, approximately 18 inches long, with a slider to adjust the coil's inductance. There are gradations marked on the slider area for ease in retuning the antenna. The coil is encased in a durable housing to protect it from dust and the elements. There are two extension rods that will assemble under the coil section. These painted aluminum sections are approximately 18 inches each with M8 screws and sockets. The 10 section stainless steel telescoping whip is 12 inches retracted and 7.5 feet fully extended. There is an M8 screw socket at the base of the whip. The base unit has an M8 screw on top and 10 inch spike on the bottom and an SO239 or UHF female connection for the coax. Along the perimeter of the base are three 3 millimeter banana plug sockets for the ground radials. The ground radials themselves are 16.5 feet long made out of silicone insulated wire with a 3 millimeter banana plug on the end. The unit also comes with 5 meters or 16 feet of coax with PL259 or UHF male connections and a BNC male to UHF female adapter. The HF009 comes with detailed instructions with color images on assembly and deployment along with an SWR charts for the various amateur radio bands. My unit came with instructions in both English and German. So how does the antenna perform? Well, let's put it on the air and find out. So 
how to adjust this antenna, uh, we just uh, manipulate the little slider right here and that changes the inductance in the coil section of the antenna that I assume is in this, this part right here. I had no problem uh, getting a good tune on both the 20 and the 40 meter bands uh, with this coil. Uh, the slider is really touchy though, uh, so it doesn't take a whole lot of movement to uh, change your, your tuning points. Now for bands above 18 megahertz, what, it, what the instructions recommend you do is to you can either move this slider up all the way for the least amount of inductance or remove this section completely and then that will let you get on to 15 meters and above um, i'm going to try tuning let me see if i can get this tuned to the um, 17 meter band here quick so here we go the best i can do <laughs> at this point in time is two to one but uh, the cool thing is, is that my reactance is pretty much zero and um, the impedance dropped down to 25 ohms, which is typical for a, um, a vertical antenna. I would, you know what? <laughs> I would run this two to with with the reactants at what it is. I'd run this. I'd run this at two to one, and I wouldn't really care a whole lot. I think it would. I think it would work just fine. One point seven five to one. One point seven five to one is the best I'm doing on uh, the ten meter band here, and um, again. I think if I played with the radials a little bit, I could I could tweak that uh, down a down a little bit lower. Uh, the best I can do on the 15 meter band is about two to one, 2.2 .2 to one. I can't find any combination of whip and abductance that gets me much lower than that. I probably could tweak the radials a little bit, um, maybe try a different position, different location, uh, but um, not getting anything otherwise, uh, not getting a good match otherwise on the 15 meter band. So um, I wouldn't call that typical. That's probably a, just a, might be a location issue more than, more than anything else, but good matches on 40, 20, 17 and 10 meters for sure. 15 is just being a little bit iffy for me today. Park to park, park to park. The park to park station? Kilo Charlie 1 Hotel Hotel Oscar. Kilo Charlie 1 Hotel Hotel Oscar got you about a 5 3 here into Wisconsin, US 1447. Back to you. Uh, QSL the 5 3, KC1 AJ going, US 840259. That was US 8402. QSL, QSL, thank you, Michael. All right, hey, thanks a lot. You have a great activation today. You too, 7 3. Kilo, 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 all right, hey, thanks for North Carolina today. You have a great day, 7-3. 7-3. Then I think I heard a station ending uniform. Kilo, Quebec 4, Oscar, Quebec uniform. Kilo, Quebec 4, Oscar, Quebec uniform, 5-7, Wisconsin, US 1447. Back to you. Roger, roger, the 5-7. I'll give you 5-7 as well, November Charlie. Over. All right, hey, thanks a lot for North Carolina today. You have a great day in 7-3. Kilo, Kilo, Victor 5, Whiskey Bravo. Kilo, Victor 5, Whiskey Bravo, 5, 9, Wisconsin, U.S. 1447. Back to you. Again, again, didn't, who was that? Uh, Kilo, Victor 5, Whiskey Bravo, you're 5, 9 in the park, 5, 9 in the park. Roger, thank you very much for that. Uh, your response got talked over. Anyway, you're 5, 5, of 55. Uh, under these conditions, that's pretty good in Fort Worth, Texas. Roger, the Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, band is uh, really, really acting strange again today, but uh, good copy, so thanks a lot for the contact. Roger, thanks for being out there. Yeah, the band reminds me of my first wife. 7-3. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, you take care. <laughs> take it easy. Kilo Bravo 9, Victor Bravo Romeo, parks on the air. Uh, cures it. I think it was a Kilo Juliet 5 Golf India Hotel. Roger, Roger. Curtis in Louisiana. You're 5 9 into Louisiana. QSL? All right. Hey, thanks for Louisiana. Yeah, you're coming back 5 3 into Wisconsin, US 1447. Back to you. Copy the 5 3 into Wisconsin. Um, uh, I'm, I follow your YouTube channel. You got some great stuff on that. All right. Hey, that's great to hear. I'm glad you enjoy the content. So uh, thanks a lot for the contact today. Have a good one. <laughs> you too, 73 Kilo Bravo Niner Victor Bravo Romeo barks on the air. Q is it? Kilowatt Juliet 7, Papa Romeo Sierra. Kilo Juliet 7, Papa Romeo Sierra, 53 into Wisconsin, US 1447. Back to you. Roger, Roger. You're a 43, 43 into Whiskey Alpha, Washington State. What's the antenna of choice today? All right. Hey, thanks a lot for Washington. Now, we're test driving a new antenna. Uh, video will probably be out next week. It's the Radiodity uh, HF009 uh, vertical. Kilo 3, Charlie Whiskey Papa. Kilo 3, Charlie Whiskey Papa. I got you. About a 5.3 into Wisconsin, US 1447. Back to you. You're five, six, five, seven here in western Pennsylvania. Uh, good to talk to you again, Mike. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot for Western PA today. It's, uh, yeah, band's a little up and down, so uh, thanks a lot for the contact. Oh, QSL. <laughs> seven, three. This is Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Parks on the air. Last call. Whiskey Alpha 5, Papa Juliet Alpha. So today we put the Radiodity HF009 on the air. We're here at Council Ground State Park in uh, north, northern Wisconsin. Beautiful place to do a parks on the air activation. Uh, Lake Alexander on the Wisconsin River is behind me. Uh, let's see, band conditions were um, a little bit challenging, but better than they have been the last few days. We've been just dealing with some very significant solar weather over the last uh, three, four days. We're on the tail end of it now, and um, it was really apparent in the um, in the signals <laughs> that we were getting, just a lot of fades up and down. But still, as vertical antennas go, I, I think the HF009 worked quite well in the situation. It handled it, it handled it great. Uh, there's some things that I really like about this antenna, and there's just things I just want to kind of point out. Uh, first off, I this is a beautiful case. Uh, I like how everything is kind of packed up in this case. Um, makes for an antenna system that is quite portable. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're looking for things that um, just you know fit fit well together, don't take up a lot of space and or or mess in your vehicle. I think you know this is definitely going to be a great choice for that. Uh, the way it's constructed is that uh, the loading coil is it's a center loaded antenna and that's that's good for a couple of things one is it gives you a little bit more bandwidth and two uh, moving the inductance coil from uh, away from the uh, feed point and getting it up further up into the radiator does increase the performance a bit uh, so center loading is usually uh, quite you know is, is, is a good thing to to kind of to kind of work towards, um, you get yeah. So you get the center loader coil. You get two you get two extension rods uh, that go below it, and then you, the whip that goes above it. Uh, this whip is a stainless steel. It is um, it's lightweight. It's more substantial than other whips. Uh, from uh, Chinese manufacturers that I've seen. Um, on some of those whips, the top section gets to be really thin and, uh, and worrisome <laughs> in that it's gonna bend. Uh, these elements are a little bit, they, 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 they've, they got a little, a little bit more size to them. Um, it still feels lightweight, but it's definitely um, a good, I think it's, it's, it's well, well constructed. Uh, the spike is not very long, it's thin. It, pu it, it pushes into the ground uh, very easily. So there's, there's that. Um, comes with three uh, 
uh, ground radials uh, with uh, with uh, banana plugs on uh, on the bottom of the of the feed point. Um, the radials are made out of silicon wire, so they do um, you know they. They do spread out uh, very easily. I, I enjoy silicon wire uh, from, um, in, my, in my antenna system, so uh, a nice design element there. And um, when you purchase the kit, it also comes with coax too. You get a short section of coax. So you got everything you need to get on, well, they say from the 60 meter band all the way up to the six meter band. Uh, when I tested this antenna, I got good matches on 40, 20, and 10 meters. So-so uh, match on the 17 meter band and I was having a real tough time getting a good match on the 15 meter band I just could not find that sweet spot on 15 meters. I've run in, into that with other vertical antennas So it doesn't concern me a whole lot <laughs> but um, Still that's just uh, something that I found a little bit challenging uh, with this one I will have to I'll have to test this antenna in maybe another location or something like that to see if if it was a location thing, or if it's just the way in which this antenna is designed. I think part of the problem is, is that the, uh, with the length of the whip and, uh, uh, and, 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 and the rest of the components, there's just, uh, you, you, um, when you move the loading coil all the way up to the top, uh, you're pretty much at the uh, 17 meter band. Uh, and you're, now you're at the point where if you want to make this work in 15, you got to start decreasing whip size. Um, removing this coil completely wasn't really the answer. So, uh, and that's the challenge I was I was coming I was coming at. You know, just to try to find that sweet spot on 15 meters. Uh, the only other thing that really concerns me is with the mounting spike here. Um, one of the th one of the concerns I have is that um, in some parks in some states you're you are either you're not allowed to put stakes into the ground. This might be a concern for that. In other times, if I wanted to use this up in, in you know during the winter, I, you know I'm not going to be able to get a I'm not going to be able to get a stake into the ground. Or if I'm in an area that has very hard compacted. Uh, earth, um, or I'm in a parking lot, or somewhere where I can't get this this spike in the ground. It is, you know, it's it's going to work in most soil conditions, but if it's hard, rocky, um, you know, you're, you're thinking thinking like uh, desert playa, or um, or if you're out in a asf asphalt, concrete, jungle, or something like that, that's going to be a problem. And I'm going to have to think of some way in which this could be modified in order to use a, a, some kind of a stand or base that didn't need to be uh, <laughs> poked into the ground. So that was one thing. I don't know if I could get this unscrewed or not. I didn't try um, messing with it to see if, if, if it could be, if we could remove the spike or not. Uh, one other thing about it is all of these screw connections are metric, so if you want to mix and match components with other antenna systems, it's not going to happen because these are M8 metric screws and not standard U.S. screws. Um, if you're, you know, for my um, European or Asian viewers, that may not be an issue for you because you're you're on that you're on that metric system. But for the U.S. audience, that the book core of my my viewership is, uh, be concerned about that. These are all metric. So, um, otherwise, it works. It works really well, and I, I've got no complaints. I'm gonna, I'll probably um, give this a few more spins, you know, to see um, before I, 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 I cast any any kind of final judgment on it. But um, otherwise, it's. I think it's a good compact portable vertical antenna system if you're looking for something that folds up into a case. Uh, you don't mind using a ground spike for all of your your your, your deployments. I think you yeah, know well, this is going to be something that might work for you. So uh, links to the Irradiotity HF008 can be found in the video description uh, down below. I do have an affiliate link down there. Uh, you can save a little bit of money. It uh, helps the channel if you purchase through that link. Um, otherwise, uh, questions, comments about the Radiotity, Radiotity HF009, leave them in, down in, uh, in the video. Uh, just uh, in the comments down below. Love to hear what you think about this antenna. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. You have a great day in 7.3.